Now, our first example or specimen here appears to look like an alien of some kind, but in fact, it's more likely that it was fabricated by a man in the Nazca area of Peru from the head of a turtle or tortoise, and that some kind of material was put over top, possibly vegetable uh, leaves of some kind. The head itself is bone, but many of these were apparently fabricated in the Cusco, or sorry, Nazca area, and sold to foreigners for lots of money. So we've just been corrected, which is good, because the local keepers of these places tend to know often more than archaeologists do, because they have the oral tradition of the area. So this site is actually called Amaru Markawasi, which is Inca. It means this, the house of the serpent, which means it was a place of higher learning during Inca times. This is the Quechua Chaca Bridge, the last Inca bridge that is repaired once every year and is located about six hours outside of Cusco, Peru. It stretches across the Apurimac River, and this, of course, is a quadcopter Pachacutec view of the last of the great Inca rope bridges. Hidden Inca tours taking you where no one else will. See the gaps in the stone? So that's more of an Inca technique. If it was quote-unquote megalithic lost ancient high technology, the stone would fit perfectly together. Here you go from classic Inca. Yep. And then here the Inca found a damaged superior wall that had been broken. So they simply took the stone and packed it back in. And then the original is here. And now we're in Egypt. This is going through an ancient shaft at Abu Sir. So here at Abu Sir, what I've been showing is the fact that in general, uh, this site is dynastic. Everything lines up north, south, east, and west. However, there are pre-dynastic elements here that are 23 degrees off north, south, east, and west. And that goes along with my uh, theory about a massive cataclysm happening here in the Giza Plateau area 12,000 years ago. Uh, the major damage from this cataclysm seems to be here in what is more or less the center of the ancient land called Boo Wizard or the land of Osiris. And then when we go south and north, the damage becomes less and less. Um, at one end you have Dashur with the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. The skin of the pyramids is sloughed off. And then the other direction, you go to the Giza Plateau, same thing. The three great pyramids are still there, generally intact, but the skin or casing stone is missing. And here we are at Abu Ghurab, and these interesting stone bowls, the original function is unknown, but we will go back and explore more in March of 2018.
Abu Sir and Abu Ghraib are not seen by tourists, and in general, they are off limits. You require special permission from the Ministry of Antiquities to visit these sites. The explanation or reasoning for that is unknown, but we are here because we have permission, thanks to the Kemet School located in Giza, in Egypt. Check out their website at www.chemetology.com. They are the only people, in my opinion, who can properly show you dynastic as well as pre-dynastic, super ancient Egypt. Video this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now these are the devices that Hakim said would produce the sound for an anti-gravity field. Originally this is labeled as schist. Susan will tell you it is not schist. Schist does not produce the sound vibration. It's a metamorphic stone. <laughs> And back in Peru, we're at an ancient Inca fortress. Notice where the quadcopter is going. Just to the left of center is the ancient, or much more ancient, megalithic aspect of this location, rebuilt on top of by the Inca. So this is a day in the life of Hidden Inca Tours. This is our first stop. This is the uh, ancient Inca gate that protected Cusco from attack from the south. But what we'll see is there are megalithic elements as well as Inca elements. So rather than finding a virgin territory and then build a city, which they named Cusco, there they found an abandoned megalithic site with many megalithic ruins like this along the way from Lake Titicaca to what became Cusco. But they found a lot of megalithic constructions and that's why they decided to build their city of Cusco, the capital, in that location rather than the Sacred Valley, which would have been more logical because the Sacred Valley is where almost all of the food is grown. And if you haven't guessed, this, of course, is world-famous Machu Picchu, which we will be visiting in June, August, and October 2018. And somewhat obscure, this is one of my very favorite places. It's called Ñaupahuaca, located in a side valley of the Sacred Valley of Peru. The creators of this are completely unknown. Quite possibly this was done with some kind of advanced lost ancient high technology. Um, fortunately, not too many visitors come here, but you can see the precision of the surfaces as if a router was used to produce this protruded area. On winter solstice, midday, the sun shines down and casts a shadow on one of these knobs. And so what the Inca did is they created that little groove there and that the next year they knew that that was winter solstice. So they just, they utilized the visual effect of what this thing was doing already and made, made it pragmatic for themselves. So here you have big megalithic blocks with little ones as filler. This would not be something that the megalithic builders would have done. This is clearly an Inca reconstruction. Because here, 
we have the big wall of the Sun Temple, and you can see that it's all stones that still fit together. And here, above the Sacred Valley of Peru, is the Fortress Administrative Center, Spiritual Center of Pizac. It's quite famous and quite popular with tourists. Some of the most uh, incredible aspects of this place are the huge curved terraces created by the magnificent Inca culture. But also there are megalithic aspects on the backside of this mountain. It takes hours to properly study Pizac. And the Piece de Resistance, the largest megalithic wall in the world.